Hey guys, Dr. Kahu here and welcome back to my channel. Now today I'm going to be doing a continuation what if and that is what if Goku became immortal part 4. Now as usual guys, if you guys can please like and subscribe, leave your comments down below, leave the bell notification on so you guys can be the first to get my new content and, fo and follow me guys on my Minecraft streams. If you guys do follow me, you guys will possibly get better updates upon what happens on my videos and what I'm going to be doing, okay guys? But yeah. Without further ado guys, let's get into this next part of what if anyway because I'm held rough and not only that, I'm going to be doing my other what ifs eventually too, just need to slowly but surely work myself back into doing videos again probably guys, sorry guys, I'm trying to re work a new routine with my new child, so bear with me, I will get back, I will, I will get back to being better, I promise you. But yeah, without further ado guys, let's get into this next part of this what if anyway, and that is, what if Goku became immortal, part 4. Now let's begin. So we're going to do a brief recap what happened previously and then jump straight into the next part of this world of okay guys. So what happened previously is back on Namek, Goku um, was fighting Frieza and uh, all in all Goku is just so much more powerful than Frieza in all, all regards. Now a certain situation happened where Goku didn't think, he allowed his um, stupidity in a sense to get the best of him. He rushed Frieza only for Frieza to shoot multiple death beams at, at his um, close friends and family. Goku was able to um, stop one um, from hitting Gohan and Dende, but unfortunately Goku was a little bit too slow to save Krillin. And Frieza chucked him in the air. Frieza tried to use Krillin as a, Krillin as a ransom for them to give up, but um, Goku wasn't having it. So Frieza closed his hand and killed Krillin right in front of Goku. Goku being in Kaioken and being super enraged, he exploded into Super Saiyan with some red, with red ore around him. Bear in mind, Goku's just going to get kicking and stronger and stronger. And long story short, Goku and Vegeta came together and killed Frieza. Frieza was atomized immediately when Goku and Vegeta both combined their Kamehameha Gatling gun. And thanks to Vegeta's jury rigging on Frieza's ship, they were able to leave on Frieza's ship. However, due to Goku not understanding the language, um, they get sent to Yajid thanks to the uh, pod that Vegeta used for navigation. So Vegeta and Goku crash land on, on um, Yajid. Vegeta is not fully healed, but he's healed enough. And Goku, uh, yeah, it's looking like a fool. From there, you guys got, you guys are caught up. Now let's begin. Now we'll take our story back on Earth right now. With everybody being on Earth, Goku and all of them, or Goku, um, Gohan, Krillin, Bulma, and everyone on Earth. Everyone starts to slay, but surely work up on their lives. Like Piccolo and himself has become a much more different person. Be um, meeting Guru, and not only that. Guru realizes that uh, it would be better if he, um, if before he dies, that he does something useful for his people. So before Guru dies, he play, he gives his abilities to Mori, turns him into an elder or, or into a, a Dragon Clan member, and from there, before Guru died, he asks Piccolo if he could pl if he could place his hand on his chest. Piccolo goes, "Are you sure about this?" Guru goes, "My time is long done, son of Kata. Not only that, your other half's up there as well, looking down." Maybe, maybe when you two combine our, our planet's history, our people, even everything we lost in the great cataclysm ye years ago, may be returned with you, Piccolo. I make I make more of the elders of the Namekians, yes, but I make you the guardian, if that's alright. Piccolo states he's grateful for the opportunity, but he doesn't want to leave Earth. He has family there, and when I remember that's Gohan, and it's a world he loves. And this is where Guru agrees, he goes, there's no other planet more safe to have than the Namekians then. And so, Guru asks if, they could, if the Namekians can stay on the planet. Bomb goes, she has an idea. And so long story short, after Guru, um, Guru is about to die, Piccolo takes, um, uh, absorbs Guru's powers, uh, effectively making him a super, a super Piccolo. But let's just state that this Piccolo is much more powerful than Kano Piccolo. Like, by the time Piccolo absorbed this Guru, he is, uh, let's just say, relative to the South Saga Piccolo, okay? In all regards. The only difference is Piccolo's regeneration and, and um, experience is way more higher, way more powerful. So Piccolo is, is ridiculously strong, I must say, okay? Now, when I mean strong, he'll probably be, be as powerful as Semi Perfect Cell, okay? That's it. That's a, uh, that, that'll be the max Piccolo will be at his max power. Uh, bear in mind, Guru is powerful, more, more stronger than Kami. 
this Piccolo is more stronger than the Canon Piccolo before merging with Kami, so this is how I justify it, okay? Now, being on Earth, Piccolo has changed a lot, and he asked Bulma what her idea was. Bulma says that we'll just use a Dragon Ball to create a little area on Earth where the Namekians can only, um, people that are inviting you to the island. Piccolo smiles and likes the idea. Bear in mind there's barely any, there's barely a hundred Namekians, so Piccolo is happy with that. Happy with that indeed. And so Bulma uses Dragon Balls, and what ends up happening is uh, a Namekian village pops up out of nowhere. Um, what's it called? In the middle of the ocean somewhere, far away, protected by a massive geomagnetic storm. No one can get in unless they're invited in. Oh, unless they're Goku and they're more powerful than the spell itself. But anyway, uh, um, an island appears and Piccolo begins to migrate all the Namekians onto this island. When they get there, it's pretty much like a pocket dimension. Because the, the island itself looks exactly like Namek. The, the vegetation, the landmass, everything. And this makes every Namekian that's there feel at home, even Mori. Mori don't mind. He loves his people. Piccolo can now go backwards and forth. He is the guardian of sense. His own former guardian on Earth and on um, Namekians. So with that, Kami looks at Piccolo and understands that he's almost ready to be take over from him. And it makes Kami smile to know that Piccolo has dramatically changed and he's becoming the guardian that he has not been. So as the world, the world goes through the same situation, even Bomber, everyone goes through the same situation. The only thing different is Bomber's, Bomber's not going to interact with Vegeta physically. But her interaction with Vegeta is still going to happen and you'll see why, okay? So I must state the majority of humans and everyone on Earth goes relatively the same. Except for Gohan. Gohan trains a lot more with Piccolo. Piccolo makes sure to instill um, better training with Gohan to control his anger and to push himself. And Gohan's going to, okay, so bear in mind, Gohan's going to be trained by a very strong Piccolo, so a lot's going to change. So we, we go back, we head back to uh, um, the Yardred. Vegeta's still recuperating from the uh, injuries on Namek, and not only that, from the, from the fact that Goku crashed the ship. <laughs> and so there's that. Um, Goku and Vegeta themselves are pondering what they do on. on Yajred, Goku himself has, has he has noticed he's become really strong. He's noticed he's retained the majority of the Super, Super Saiyan strength and base because he was in Kaioken state, so it pushed his body to its uh, breaking limits. And Vegeta goes, Kakarot, why are you so special? Why don't you get injured? And Goku goes, I actually have no idea. I thought it was just a side effect of me coming back from the dead, but I don't know. And this is when, um, what's it called? Um, Elder Paibara, the, um, the leader of the Yajred, he talks to Goku and tells him a really powerful magic has been placed upon you. A magic that can't be removed. And Goku goes, oh? And he goes, but it's important though, because it must be. And so the Goku talks and Paibara states that he, he can train them both to utilize the, um, spiritual control, but it's up to them. After finding that the Goku and Vegeta were the heroes that defeated the Ginyu Force, yep, they happily accepted the, um, Vegeta and Goku as students. Vegeta healed, and Goku got a little bit of a head start. But bear in mind, it doesn't really take much though, because Vegeta is actually the better one out of them two at spiritual control. And so for the next year, Vegeta and Goku are training in spiritual control. It goes from Vegeta beating Goku to Goku, just challenging, they've been challenging each other to do better and better. And so over the full year, Vegeta and Goku get to the point where they, they can make thousands of clones, thousands of giant versions and small versions of themselves. They can pass energy backwards or forth. Um, what's it called? They can do spirit vision. Vegeta's actually the best at spirit, spirit vision. He will beat Goku so much. Goku's actually the best at instant transmission. But all in all, Vegeta and Goku have become so much more powerful. Not only that, Vegeta has even learnt Super Saiyan. Thanks to Goku and Vegeta spending a year together and the fact they master spiritual control together, Vegeta and Goku are, are just way more powerful than they should be. Goku himself especially, he's stronger than Vegeta in his base form, even if Vegeta goes Super Saiyan, Goku's base form can take Vegeta. Goku learnt a thing or two with his super healing. Vegeta knows that too and it kind of makes him angry but he understands. And so the faded day when the year is almost up and King Cold hits the earth, bear in mind King Cold still hits the earth. Because he doesn't find Frieza, but his men do state that Frieza, uh, the people that killed him, did come from Earth. Well, the people that were supposedly going to Namek that Frieza um, listened to went to Earth. So, King Cold will do step. Oh well, let's go to Earth. He takes his remaining forces and he heads there to the planet. And when he gets there, he lands and he's confronted immediately by uh, Piccolo. Piccolo stands there with Gohan on the side. All the other Z Fighters, um, they are afraid and stay back. Even Krillin, even though he's the strongest human. He stays back, of course, but Gohan and Piccolo stay in their ground. King Cold walks out and goes, hmm, 
I am greeted by an Amikian and a little child. How poetic. Tell me, where's the one known as Son Goku? Piccolo goes, he's not here, and then if he was, what's that to you? I'm guessing by the look of you and the power and the ship, you're Freeza's family. He goes, <laughs> Freeza's family? I am the one and only King Cold. I am Freeza's father. And you're looking at the Emperor of the Universe. Now before I kill you, stupid Namekian, I would like to ask again, where is Son Goku? And Goku goes, what the hell do you want with him anyway? And he goes, <laughs> he brings the power up. He goes, I would like to repay him for taking my son's life. And Piccolo's like, so they succeeded. <laughs> Your son must be nothing then. What, what makes you think you can take on Goku? And Kenko goes, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. And since Freeze is not as powerful as I am, Kenko begins to power up, not in the slightest. Piccolo starts to feel it and goes, you will now feel the full force of my vengeance. King Cobb explodes, explodes in full power. Now he can either turn into a hypothetical final form. In doing so, um, King Cobb walks forward with <laughs> Bask in my glow, little, little Namekian. And as King Cobb walks forward, Puka is actually taken aback because um, Akira Toriyama, the Dragon Ball Z um, person they wrote and made the series up, stated if King Cobb had a theoretical final form, his final form would have been as powerful as semi-perfect cell. Those are his exact words. So using that using that notion, King Cold and Piccolo are going to be relative to the same exact power. However, King Cold is going to have that slight advantage, or that rage and that power boost. So when King Cold walks forward, he goes, <laughs> You're right to despair. Piccolo looks at Gohan and goes, Gohan, stay back. This is my fight. And as Piccolo steps forward, and he's about to engage in King Cold, boom, instantly. The GD and Goku instant transmission right in front of Piccolo. And Piccolo stops. And looks at Goku and looks at Vegeta. And he's like, Goku, Vegeta. How did you? And Goku goes, hey Piccolo. And Vegeta's like, huh, the father. All right, Kakarot. And Goku goes, haven't you noticed he's much stronger than Freezer? And Vegeta goes, huh, makes sense. He's the father, of course. There Goku goes, does that mean your dad was more powerful than you, Vegeta? Vegeta, ha, ridiculous. My father got killed by that full freezer. And Goku goes, well, technically you almost did too. And Vegeta's like, come on, Kakarot, we're not counting that. And Goku smiles. And Goku turns back and goes, hey, hey, everybody. Everyone's like, Goku. Goku's like, dad. He rushes up to Goku. They're all happy to see him. King Cole's like, this is a touching family reunion. And so he opens his hand, shoots a, shoots a massive key blast at Vegeta, uh, at, at everyone. And doing so, what happens is Vegeta appears right in front of King Cole, catches his hand, and, and stops it. And King Cole's like, how dare you touch me, you insignificant speck. He goes to backhand Vegeta. Vegeta um, crouches down. He jumps back and the apple cuts King Cole away. King Cole lands and goes, hmm, I actually felt that. That was quite an impressive saying. Vegeta's like, to be honest, to be honest, King Cole, you're way more, you're way more impressive than your son, Frieza, I'll give you that. But when I killed him, I finally got to satisfy, satisfy the need I didn't get to do for years for all the Saiyans. King Cole goes, so you killed him, Vegeta. Then you will die. King Cole rushes at Vegeta and goes, goes to throw a punch. Vegeta smiles and goes, <laughs> a lot has changed over the years, King Cole. Vegeta's aura starts to emit massive gold energy. Then as King Cole's fist goes to connect with Vegeta's head, Vegeta instantly explodes into Super Saiyan and stops King Cole's um, fist in, in midair. Bear in mind, this Goku and this Vegeta are way stronger than Kanan. Like, way stronger. They should not be this strong, but they are. Vegeta instantly stops King Cold's hand with just, his, just his, uh, his normal key pressure itself. And Vegeta instantly flexes with his key, pushing King Cold back. Vegeta rushes King Cold and slams his fist right in his face and begins to beat him down. And then what happens is Goku's like, oh yeah, me and Vegeta were training the Yajo. We, we learned a lot, blah, blah, blah. And Bomber goes, I know. Me and Vegeta argued every day on the bloody intercom on the ship. And Goku's like, what? He goes, what did he mean? He goes, every, he goes, anytime Vegeta went out to the ship was for repairs. And Bomba goes, repairs? No, the idiot keep ringing out road. It's going to tell him to send another ship. Can send another ship. And Goku's like, really? Huh? And Bomber's like, yeah. So I pretty got, pretty much got to know the to know the fool. I'm just like really, really irritated. Because bear uh, at this point, Bomb and Vegeta were, um, were talking to each other normally, <laughs> as if there were people they were going to connect like canon. <laughs> but anyway, Goku said, "Huh, Vegeta? All right." 
And then Goku looks at and goes, wow. Damn it, Vegeta. I don't really want to have a fight, but I get it. I get it. Piccolo's like, Goku, my have you grown in power. Even now, you stand right next to me. It's unreal. I can't believe that you're this powerful. And Goku smiles like, yeah, a lot's changed, Piccolo. A lot has changed. And Goku looks at Piccolo and goes, I can see the same in you too. And Piccolo goes, <laughs> that's what happens when I'm the protector of my people. And Goku goes, oh, good on you. That's good. That's good for you. I'm guessing an elder car, an elder guru merged with you. Because how did you know? And he goes, Goku taps his hand on the shoulder. And goes, thanks to my abilities I learned on Yadred, I can see the the different power within you. I can't explain to you, but if I really want to, I can force that power out and separate all of you. Piccolo goes, you can. And he goes, yeah. And he goes, well, don't. And Goku says, no, no, I'm not saying, I'm saying. And Goku goes, what well, suits you anyway? And then look back at the fight. Goku, um, Goku's standing there pondering, and as Vegeta, the Vegeta begins to have enjoy his battle against King Cole, um, sparks fly everywhere, key blasters are floating everywhere, massive shockwaves are, are breaking canyon mountains, and this is when Goku notices someone on top of the hill. Goku said, hmm, places his hand on his head, and he senses the kid. He instantly changes to the kid, because he says, Goku, what are you doing? And Goku appears and goes, who are you? Trunks turns around, pulls the sword out, goes to stop Goku, Goku puts his finger out, and stops the blade right then and there. And Trunks is like, ugh, ugh. Goku's like, that's not a that's not a way to greet people, we know that, right? Goku pushes Trunks' sword away, he goes, ugh, you, you, you're, you're Goku! And Goku goes, yes, um, I think I am. <laughs> and, and Trunks goes, uh, I'm sorry, Goku, uh, you caught me off guard. Oh my god, was up ever since I saw that being turned so powerful. And Goku goes, don't matter about him, who are you anyway? And he goes, oh, my name is Trunks, and uh... How do I say this to you, Goku? Ah, oh, damn it, Trunks. Goku, so you're Trunks. So, who are you again? And Trunks goes, very well. My name is Trunks, and I'm from the future. The future I come from, the world is being terrorized by androids. Three years after this situation. Anyway, I grew up in that desolated world, trained by, one, um, trained by your son, Gohan. He was the last of you to survive. He trained me to the point where I was fully able to fight, and then when it came to the point where he needed me the most, I wasn't there. Goku's like, huh? And Trunks like, I'm sorry. Goku places his hand right on Trunks' head, and begins to read his mind. He goes, it's alright. He sees everything. Goku's eyes widened, and the last vision he sees is the fact that he is the son of both Vegeta and Bulma. Goku looks go, he drops to the ground, and he laughs intently so hard. He goes, you're the son of Bulma, Vegeta? <laughs> Goku's like, what the hell? Piccolo hears it. He hears everything Goku said. He goes, there you are. And, hmm? Future? Androids? What? And Goku goes, oh, all right. And Trunks is like, yeah, how are you guys back here? Anyway, and he goes, oh, we learned a lot of techniques on the Android. Stick around there, kid. You don't need to rush back. As you said, you got a time, you got a time machine, right? And he goes, oh, well, yeah, Goku. He goes, well, you can always get back a time each time. For now, just stick around here, kid. Maybe you can watch, learn a thing or two from your father. Trunks is looking on. And it goes, how does my father have have Super Saiyan now? He didn't achieve Super Saiyan until the Android attacked. And Goku goes, oh, that? Oh, I mean, he trained a lot. Don't worry, though. Don't worry, though. Uh, even if the Androids are remotely near Vegeta's strength, I'm stronger than my base form. Trunks looks to Goku and he realizes like, how casual Goku's smart. <laughs> Trunks is like, he goes, wow, Goku, you're amazing. And Goku goes, well, why are you here? Why are you here, Trunks? You can stay here for a bit. Well, um, stay here for a few while. Until um, what's it called? Um, our androids come and they head back to your world. But Trunks goes, oh, but I need to get back to my world immediately. And he goes, doesn't time travel go back in time a certain day you choose? And Trunks goes, well, yes. Then Goku goes, so you can't go back in time at the same time? And Trunks like, well, I can actually. He goes, well, there, there you go. It's settled. Trunks like, oh, okay, Goku. He looks up and goes, wow, my father's pretty powerful. Hey, he goes, Goku says, yeah, he's really powerful indeed. He's a great rival, and Trunks smiles. Vegeta's uh, uh, back with Vegeta and King Cole's fight. King Cole's getting impressed no matter what. Vegeta's enjoying this, enjoying this fight. He actually thought King Cole would be much more of a, um, well, much harder because of his strength level, but not. King Cole's not. Vegeta punches King Cole, he jumps right in front of him, and he starts to make, um, what's it called, clones of himself. And King Cole swipes clones away, they all disappear, and as he goes for the apparent real v Vegeta, what happens is Vegeta, the real Vegeta disappears, well, he shrinks actually. And then grabs King Cole's legs from behind, regrows, and slams King Cole on the ground. Vegeta goes, 
His fighting style is good at all, with the spiritual control Kakarot, boom, kicks kick cold in the face. But it's too distracting for me. I think I will stop using this type of fighting style in my fighting and my fights in general. He goes, that would be best. I thought we only used them for training anyway. Vegeta's like, okay. And Goku's like, huh. Well, this is Vegeta's like, well, this is disappointing. I actually hoped for you to be much more powerful than much more, more powerful than what you are. But alas, boom, Vegeta goes to full power. And Vegeta goes, <laughs> I can't believe I get to do this again. Kakarot, I am very grateful you bastard that you helped me like this. And Vegeta goes, A gift from you, King Cold! Boom! Vegeta punches King Cold in the, in the sky. Bear in mind, none of King Cold's men have attacked. They just stood there watching. And Vegeta punches King Cold here. He opens his hands up and goes, Here's a new attack I've been developing on. Yajo Kakarot. Here it goes! Big Bang! Attack! It was a massive Big Bang attack. And as King, Co King Cold looks down, he gets hit by the attack, he and completely destroyed. His body gets spun apart everywhere, left to right, everywhere. And when Freezer's men, or King Cold's men see it, I'm seeing this, they're absolutely afraid. They get on, they get down on their knees, a belt of Vegeta, like, the new Emperor of the Universe, blah, blah, blah. And Vegeta's like, ha, I'll become the Emperor of the Universe. I'm done with this nation of ruling planets. However, I may need subordinates. You guys want to live right? And he goes, yes, yes, Lord Vegeta. Goku's like, good. Vegeta's like, good. From now on, you guys work for me. And Goku's like, Vegeta? And Vegeta's like, Don't, not to worry, Kakarot. Your simpleton ideas have actually gotten through to me. I know your, I know your ploy. This world, a weak. We need to protect them, right? We've got a force here that can do the same. And Bomb was like, well, I have the technology to help Alpha, do we know, Vegeta? And Vegeta's like, hmm. Very well, woman. I'll agree to that help. And so, oh, we have to wait. And so, what happens is before, before they go, Goku um, explains everything to what Trunks will said, except for um, Trunks being Vegeta's son. So Goku will tell Vegeta on his own, because, well, Goku and Vegeta have gained that kind of friendship. Um, not only that, um, Trunks stays there. So, everyone goes off, all the humans go out to do their thing. Quillen himself um, continues his training, because, well, he's the most powerful human. You know, so he wants to make sure he, he retains his status as that. So, he trains all the time. This is where things are different. Because this Gohan is much more stronger than Canon, he almost is already uh, touching on Super Saiyan. He just needs a little more, more encouragement from Goku and uh, Vegeta. So for the next three years, um, these these are the people that train together: Piccolo, Gohan, Vegeta, Goku, and Trunks. All of them train, and Krillin does too. All of them train together all the time, all the time. At this point in time, Vegeta and Bomb have gotten together, much similar to Canon. But this Vegeta is much more. Control at least, and not only that, free, um, um, thanks to King Cold's soldiers, there's about 150 of them, I guess. I'm just gonna say 150 of them, but um, having them there, they work as a sort of capsule court um, protection force around Earth, and so <laughs> pretty much capsule corp um, pretty much sets a mark for themselves. They become a, um, a peaceful broker for the world, and so those soldiers that once were King Cold's soldiers are now protectors of the planet, helping out everyone, helping arrogant land, all that stuff. And they're happy with their lives on Earth, they're content as hell. Vegeta, however, he is massively strong and he always wants to push Goku and, and himself more powerful, more, more better. But thanks to Vegeta being married to Bulma, he gets, he gets the advantage of having the gravity room. But this is the one thing Goku did take into consideration. Goku goes to Bulma and goes, hey Bulma. And he goes, yeah, he goes, do you still have that ship that we had back on Namek? And he goes, she goes, yeah, I do. And he goes, cool, am I able to use that? And she goes, oh, you want to go into space? He goes, no, I want the gravity chamber. And Bulma's like, why did you say so, Goku? I've been working on a, I worked on a gravity chamber for Vegeta last month. Here, yeah. goes, what's that? Goes, this this gravity chamber can go up to five hundred times gravity. Goku's jaw drops. He goes, really? And she goes, yeah. And he even has a healing pot in there. But no, no doubt that you need it, of course. Goku's like, yeah. He goes, hey, wait. How did you know I don't need a healing pod? And this is where Bulma, this is where Bulma finally spills the beans. He goes, oh, you don't know Goku. And she goes, he, he's like, no. And he goes, oh, I see. Um. Well, long story short, Master Roshi used the, um, used the Dragon Balls to make a wish for you to be revived in the immortal Saiyan body. Goku's like, Psh, what? Immortal? He goes, huh? He goes, I need to use the so I'm immortal. So, where's the Dragon Raider, Bulma? I don't want to be like this. This is sickening. Bulma goes, there's the one problem, Goku. Goku the problem? And he goes, because we wished you into that body, your spirit has bonded with that body, as Shenron stated, meaning... Unfortunately, you're stuck like this, Goku. Shenron's power can't remove it, no matter how powerful he gets. And Goku's like, 
Are you serious? And Goku's eyes are wide open. Vegeta heard everything. And he walks in and he goes, Ha! And I wanted to immortality? Ah, the old look like a massive clown like you, Kakarot. Ha 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 Goku's like, Shut the hell up, Vegeta! Goku's so not happy. <laughs> and so, what goes down is, Goku's like, No! No! <laughs> Looks at himself. And he goes, Ah, very well. Anyway, so Goku takes the cha takes the gravity chamber and, and the three years go by really, really relatively fast. And so by the time it comes to the Android saga, Piccolo is as strong as Super Perfect Cell. I'm just gonna state that. Him and Kami haven't fused together yet, but it's on the tables. Um, Gohan is his Super Saiyan is as strong as Super Perfect Cell. He's actually as strong as Piccolo in, in, entirely. He he's got Super Saiyan. And he, he, his potential raised massively. So I'm going to state that when he goes Super Saiyan, he's as strong as his Super Saiyan 2 counterpart. Vegeta and Goku, however, they are so far beyond what is normal. Especially Vegeta, or especially Goku at least. Goku and his base form are stronger than all of them. Then when Vegeta and Gohan and Piccolo go full power, Goku and his base form, because of the fact that he uses Kaioken on a regular to break his body and increase himself even more, Vegeta understands that like, like Goku is just max maximizing on his, his found ability, you know? But to Vegeta, he's like, that's cheating, Kakarot, bastard. But it pushes Vegeta to even become even more stronger. And so, Goku and himself, he can use Kaioken up to Kaioken times 50. <laughs> that's how much he's used to buy. And he what he does is when he's in the 500 times gravity, Goku sits in Kaioken. But then notice this increases his strength a lot, even more. It wears his body down, especially Kaioken times 50. It wears his body down dramatically, burns him out. But even though he has unlimited energy, he gets, yeah, you understand the idea. So Goku, Goku in his base form is stronger than Vegeta, Gohan, and Piccolo, and everyone on Earth altogether. That's how strong he has become. Now, when it comes to the fated day of the Android attack, it still happens. Everyone's are still on the island. Bear in mind, here's the, here's the thing that's different. Both Trunks and Goten were born the same year. So, in all fairness, Trunks and Goten are the same age and they're going to exist early and in your season. But as Bulma is there and everything like that goes the same, Dr. Dro kills, supposedly kills Yamcha. Everything goes relative, it's not until Goku and Vegeta confront um, Dr. Dro where things change. Goku looks at Dr. Dro and Dr. Dro looks at Goku and goes, So my, my, my scans and calculations were right. You are, the, you are so much more powerful than these ones. I'm so grateful I compensated my capacitors for this. Dr. Joy activates him fully. But then he stands there ready and tells 19 to attack Goku. 19 goes to attack Goku, but Goku doesn't move. And as 19's face, fist um, um, connects to Goku, it just hits Goku's head, breaking it. And as he begins to fight Goku, he breaks his hand all over Goku's face until he realizes that he can't really do nothing to Goku. And so as 19's standing there, He's, he's not worn out, but he's actually, um, un he doesn't know what he can do. The last thing he can do is try to absorb Goku's key, but his hands are broken closed, so he can't do nothing. And so with the last of his, uh, well, the last of his effort, anyway, he rushes in head first, puts all his effort in to try killing Goku with his head. But Goku looks at him, Goku takes a step to the side, and he grabs, 19, he grabs 19's foot. Goku slams 19 onto the ground so hard it causes a huge ass crater. 19 is completely immobilized immediately. Goku goes, you used to stay right there. 19 broken, can't move, nothing at all. Goku walks past 19 and goes, no, I'm guessing it's just you then. And Dr. Joe's like, you can't. He rushes in to go try to attack Goku, he just knows he needs to. And Goku just watches Dr. Joe, okay? But this is when Dr. Joe is smart, he distracts Goku enough by shooting a beam across Dr. Goku's shoulder. Goku looks back, but Vegeta blocks the attack from going near anyone. And as Goku gets close, Dr. Joe grabs Goku's hand and begins to siphon energy. And Dr. Joe begins to do so, he begins to absorb lots of energy. And Goku feels weak for a brief moment, and he stands up and goes, Oh, that's what those red things do, right? Absorb energy. Alright then, let's see how much he can absorb. Goku catches Dr. Joe's hand and crushes, uh, crushes his arm into Dr. his own hand. So when Dr. Joe's absorbing energy, he has no choice. And Goku goes, let's see how much you can absorb. Goku goes, full powered base form. And going full power base from Dr. Joe's absorbing, he goes, <laughs> You're just making me stronger, Goku. And Goku goes, Am I? He's starting to make a massive earthquake, and as Goku powers up more and more and more and more and more, everyone's like, Whoa, Vegeta's like, Damn, Kakarot, the gap between me and you is getting bigger. What the hell? Goku's like, How would you like this, Jiro? Jiro's like, Ha ha. He goes, Keep it coming, Goku. I'm just gonna ensure your demise. 
Then take this. Goku powers up to full power Super Saiyan. The moment he goes Super Saiyan, Vegeta, and all of them are just dumbfounded. Goku amplified his power 50 times. When Dr. Joe started absorbing it, he reached his max immediately. He's like, no, no, please, take it back. No, I can't. Goku's like, I've got more. Kaioken times 50. He says Kaioken times 50, and as he as he's in Super Kaioken times 50, Vegeta just is frozen like, ah. Oh. So this is the ladder I have to climb. Vegeta looks away. Everyone on the planet that can sense energy are absolutely scared upon this enormous monstrous energy that Goku just emitted. Goku crushes a Dr. Joy's head and as Dr. Joy begins to explode of energy, his, he can't do nothing. His eyes pretty much blow out of his head. His body begins to steam and then boom, in one massive explosion, Dr. Joy is destroyed. A huge crater is emitted and Goku standing in the middle. He powers down. Whew. Goku getting his Zen Kai for being in the Kaioken state. He just increased his strength even more. <laughs> Vegeta noticed that and he goes, he, he, At first, he's gonna make it funny. Damn you, Kakarot! But he's like, uh, That was pretty smart, to be honest. And so Vegeta and them all smile and leave off. And this is when Trunks comes and realizes, uh, and realizes that this is not the, um, the same android. Bear in mind, Trunks stayed for two years. He learned a lot of techniques from Goku and Vegeta and then he went back. But he, he's gonna come back this time very soon. But anyway, after them all reg uh, reg regrouping everything, Vegeta goes, So you can stack out a Kakarot? And Goku goes, What? And he goes, You can stack your Kaioken onto your Super Saiyan even easier. And Goku goes, Yeah, well, it wasn't that easy, Vegeta. And Vegeta goes, I know. I can see it. You've taught me Kaioken Kakarot. And Goku's like, Well, yeah. And Vegeta smiles and goes, Damn. And he goes, Oh, that was easy. And Trunks goes, Well, those went to the androids, that's why. They look back and goes, Trunks, you're back. And Bomb was like, Trunks? And Vegeta goes, Yeah. This kid's our future son. But was like, what? And Goku smiles, and from there, Chunks goes, that's not the androids. And so they spent the next week, week or so trying to look for the androids. Bulma finally, uh, finally gives up the idea that, oh, I know, um, Dr. Jiro, he's, uh... And so they, they, they find the lab eventually, but when they get there, the lab's already been broken into. When they get in there, the 17, 18 pods have been ripped, ripped open and already absorbed. And not only that, when they walk through, there's another capsule with a big ass man locked in uh, in his pod, designated Android 16. And so what happens is they're about to destroy the base, but Goku goes, "No, we need we might need Bulma to come through. Maybe she can help out with the situation. Tell us what happened." And this is when Star walks through and goes, "There's no need to. <laughs> it took you long enough for you guys to um, register that I was here, Goku." Goku looks at him and goes, "Register?" And he goes, "I am Perfect Cell." I am the creation Dr. Jiro tried to complete, but didn't in my time period. So I came back in time, to, and now I achieved my perfect form. Goku walks over to Dr. Um, Sal, and Sal goes, Bear in mind, Goku, I am more powerful than you think. Goku goes, Are you sure about that? And he goes, I sensed your energy when I came here, and powerful as you were, yes. <laughs> okay, what happens is immediately, Sal releases his energy, and doing so, Goku's like, oh, oh, What the? He can't believe it because <laughs> not only do I have the similar powers to all of you, but I'm also immortal like you two, like you are Goku. I have your DNA after all. Goku's like, looks at Sal and goes, <laughs> we'll try past Goku. Everyone's like, actually shocked. And he's like, how about this to appease my Saiyan say side? I'll call for a tournament, Goku, in 10 days. Goku looks at Sal and goes, in 10 days we will fight. And if you don't prove a worthy adversary, you die along the well, If You won't die, but I will do something about you though. This planet will end. Everyone you love, Goku, will be gone with it. Goku looks at Sal and Sal looks at Goku. And Sal goes, this is all on you, Goku. Goku's so angry and he goes, I accept these terms. And as Goku and Sal look at each other and square off, this is where I'll leave guys. I hope you guys like this. Please like and subscribe and leave your comments down below. Uh, but yeah, um, I'll be continuing other water soon, so you stay um, stay tuned, okay, guys. But as usual, guys, this is Dr. Kahu saying peace.